Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We knew this would happen now that Jason Tartik is promoting his new book. I don't blame him, but there are some words being thrown as he describes the ending of his relationship with Caitlin Bristow. This is how it works. A tale as old as time. Uh, when a relationship ends, you want to protect the other partner. You want to take the high road, but... Inevitably, as uh, celebrities or influencers, there's always one person that will say something that'll get the other person to respond. Next thing you know, it's a fallout melee. Do I think Jason has it in him for the fallout melee? No, but we will listen very closely to what he has to say. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. At noon central time, we'll be going live on the Patreon to discuss the docuseries for the Clayton Eckert paternity scandal. Yes, the one being sought after by many um, major streaming networks. We're actually going to put together a rough draft on what we think the titles would be for the six to eight different episodes. It'll be fun. Join us on Patreon at noon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. That is central time. And also morning and afternoon Bachelor Rush Hour. We wrap it all up in a nice bow in one piece. All right, so there's two podcasts I'm going to share with you. The first, just a clip from the Savannah Chrisley podcast, but then to save your eardrums from any further annihilation, I'll share with you uh, the episode with Chris Harrison and Ben Higgins. That that's where Jason shares a little bit more. They do that episode after several bottles of wine. And I'm telling you right now, he said something about a lot of um, that uh, he's she's taken a lot of passive aggressive and digs little digs at him. So we'll share some of what he said. Hey, look, I don't blame him. He's got a book to sell. You know, share your story, monetize it. Either way, let's go to the first clip here. Uh, Jason Tartik's interview with Savannah Chris. And I think right when we got engaged shortly thereafter, a lot of outside things entered into our life. It's a nice job. And I think as a result of that, there were some things that resentment was built and it wasn't worked through. And so... Was it resentment on her side, your side, or both? Both. Um, I think... I think both. I think in general, resentment in relationships usually will work in both, yeah. right? So su suppose it's sparked by one side. Let's just suppose it's sparked by my ex. And then th then it's very likely that your partner will have resentment because of the resentment that's had. Yeah. And if you don't work through that, you don't work through that. And assen essentially resentment is a lack of appreciation. So you might resent somebody else because they work all day. They might resent you because you don't value the fact that they're bringing food to the plate. You know what I mean? It can go both ways. Yeah, right. And so I think a lot of things came to fruition that had to be worked through and just they weren't worked through properly in a, in a healthy way. Right. And I think this is something that comes up in like every relationship. Mm -hmm. Resentment will build. And I could list my list, you yeah. know, and then your partner or ex could list their list. Go for it. And it's likely those things <laughs> don't, don't align. No. That's why I'm like so against... This is why we broke up. These are the things because, of course, my ex will have her perspective on yeah. those things. And they're gonna Truthfully, the thing that they should have done is what Susie and Clayton did, which is go on one podcast and just both explain it. Now, obviously, that can be very tough when there's a lot of pain. Jason and Caitlin had a much deeper, longer lasting relationship than Susie and Clayton did. Um, all right, let's let's wrap this one up and we'll get to the next one. Let's see if he says anything else. It's going to be different than that. And if we both agreed on these things, we'd probably still be exactly. together. Exactly, you would still be together. Right? And it's all opinionated hearsay. So I try to, you know, so was stay it to just to that. Was it just the resentment and not having that connection to work through these things? I, I've already said this stuff, but Caitlin has, Caitlin, Caitlin broke up with me, right? Okay. So that's out there. So um, she broke up with you. She broke up with me. That's what he said. We uh, tried to, you know, I was like, I have a ton Did of respect and care for her. Yeah, kind of. Yes. I was, <laughs> it was like, it was a bit of ignorance. The breakup the fact story. That, like, I knew it was coming, but I was avoiding it. You know, like it's kind of the same issue why we were there. It's not not running through it, but running away from it. I tell you what, when I met Jason and Caitlin when I did off the vine, they looked they looked fine. Like if you wanted to really look at it in hindsight and go, well, maybe they weren't completely lovey dovey. Maybe they were more like roommates at that point. But then you could say the same thing about any relationship if you catch it at noontime in the kitchen. It's like you're not there for the romantic area. So hard to tell what some when something's gonna work out or not work out from the outsider looking in. We uh, tried to, you know, I was like, I have a ton Did of respect and care for her. Yeah, kind of. Yes. I was, uh -huh. it was like, it was a bit of ignorance in the fact that like, I knew it was coming, but I was avoiding it. 
You know, like mm-hmm. it's kind of the same issue why we were there. It's did, not, it re- did it just not repeat running itself? through it, but running away from it. So when did you guys actually, so you announced you what, broke I'm up. I'm such not a rambler in when I talk oh, on this you're, topic. You're, yeah, because I am just you're like, rambling. How do I skate out of this conversation? It's <laughs> all I'm thinking about. Okay, well, <clears throat> you have to like. Yeah, well, so she, so she broke up with me, then we, it was amicable. We put a statement out there. You put it out in there was, August there, yeah, of and this year. But when did she actually? July eighth. It was in July, early July. <laughs> Look at Aaron's face because she knows where I'm going with you this. You could go anywhere. So early so, July, we publicly put that out there in August. Yes. So she came on my podcast. Yeah. In March. Okay. I mean, <laughs> might as well. We're here. All right, share it. What does she know? I mean, tell us. She came on my podcast in March, and I just knew by how she was talking yeah. about your relationship. I was like, this is not going anywhere. Yeah. Like this is gonna end. Yeah. I I've heard there were yeah, I've heard there were a lot of conversations I wasn't aware of. Whoa. Uh, now I wanna know. I want to know what love is. I want to know. Does Savannah know something she's not saying? Like, did 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 Caitlin go on Savannah's podcast and then after be like, we're not, this isn't working yet. Uh, because, I mean, look, hey, or or she just, you know, I hate it when people say, oh, I knew it wasn't. Shut up. You, you didn't know. Or did you? Uh, before the breakup, Tell us. we're similar to that. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and that was a, cause it was just like, there was never a step to move forward. There was never like, let's play in a wedding. Let's do these things. That's so cause that's what I had asked. And she was like, Oh, I'm in no hurry. And like I said, I have so, I don't, I have yeah. so much respect. I have so much. She was awesome. Mm-hmm. But I just knew then that I felt like your relationship like was not. By the way, Savannah's hair looks like she's going to argue at a Target. <laughs> Doesn't she look like the type who wants to ask for somebody's manager? I didn't even know, honestly, at that point, if y'all were still together, just by like social media interaction and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. so that's why it reminded me so much of Nick and I, because I was like, I remember being in this place. And it's kind of like, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. Like, you love this person so much, you want it to work. But for some reason, it's like there's this big thing that you can't identify. Yeah. By the way, I actually really like this set. It's very like light. The 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 video is really nice. The audio, I would work. I'd maybe back off our mic a little bit. But the audio, but the whole set's actually really nice. These chairs are cool. Um, she's got a lot of good things going on. I think what works out well for her in her podcasting technique, which she probably doesn't know, is that she is pretty unfiltered. The way that it was pretty rude. The way she told Jason, "Hey, by the way, I feel like I already knew the way she was talking about you." It's very like, it doesn't make her look good. It doesn't make Caitlin look good. And it's tough on Jason to put him in the spot to be like, we all knew this was happening and you didn't, you know what I mean? It, but, but either way, it, it ends up making a good clip. All right, let's move along. So I've got a lot to share here from this podcast. I've got probably five different clips here. It is Chris Harrison and Ben Higgins. I found this on the Almost Famous podcast. Apparently it's also on Chris Harrison's podcast. It's one of those slop iHeart radio things where they just air the same interview on different episodes because I I guess who the fuck cares? They're making ad money. No one cares. So either way, some amazing things are said here. They've had several bottles of wine. Have a listen. You seem like you're on the uptick. Just in a lot of ways. Uh, I think like last time we talked, like obviously there were a lot of emotions. What's good about emotions is you get those things out. You name it to drain it. And um, you go through the grieving process. I've gone through that process. I have full acceptance. And so that feels good. I feel lighter every day. You know, for me, I was watching from the outside. So I got to see the headlines and listen to the episode. The two of you are great at that. Like, I had no doubt that the two of you would dive in authentically uh, and and really pull out the emotions. And I think it's good for people to hear Mm -hmm. because it does... Like the reaction is very positive. Like so, Ben is discussing the fact that Jason Tartik went on Chris Harrison's podcast last month, but he was still very numb, maybe a couple months ago. It keeps people update updated with where you're at in life, Jason. Yeah, but we're here now. Like, I guess the question I have for you is, like, what are you looking forward to now in the future? Like, this is a whole new start for you. If they listen to the podcast on the most dramatic podcast ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they kind of got a, a baseline of where you're at in life. Now we're here in, in Carmel a few months later, a month later, like what's next for you? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to give me that platform with these two giant podcast hosts, I got to take the platform to do a little plug. 
I have a new book coming out, right? Talk money to me. So I'm, I'm very focused on that book. Um, I'm also very transparent with things like that. If I sell one book or I sell, I don't know, probably 50,000 books, it's not going to put another penny in my pocket. I'm just very passionate about the subject matter of we have to learn finances. And then when we learn finances, we have to learn how to protect them. All right. So uh, he our- tries to make it back to the book and we're all like, F your book. We want the T. F your book. We want the T. F your book. We want the T. Trying to process like, this yeah. and name it and label it and figure out where it goes. Of course. Yeah. Now, if we were going to label this chapter, where are we? It's acceptance and cl- pure, purest form of clarity. And, uh, and it just excited, like excited for what's next. In my life, I, I want to have family. I want to have kids. I recognize I'm 35. So I know that there's, there's only so much time for this period of my life where I can- uh, as far as Maddie Pruitt's concerned, you're 35. You don't even have grandkids yet. What took you so long? Could just be the main priority and go. So I would name it as like clarity, go and stop overthinking. Just like go, go do it. So you have the business, a little financial freedom. You've dealt with all the issues. And my guess is you've, you're also realizing, you know, you got a modicum of fame, right? You got a little name recognition out there. So you're enjoying this chapter right now, it seems. I don't, when, so when you phrase it like that, I don't, I, the, the whole like, those things are great, but that. Shut up, Jason. You've got money. You got a good hairline. You got white teeth. You go get it. That's not why I'm enjoying it. Truly. Bullshit. I'm enjoying it because for so long, I've been so bogged down of worrying about everyone else and taking care of everyone else. And in, if you get into like therapy sh- it's the rescuer, which is like an un- yeah. unhealthy version of the coach. And I'm excited to just take care of me. And so fame, whatever, all that bullshit. Like, I don't care. It's just like, I have so much light but that helps. I don't feel so much empathy for people I once loved. And I feel so much care for what I want. And so that's truly what I'm most excited about, right? Like all that stuff is like bullshit. I think all the fame and all well, these, all these things we get, it, it helps. All, it, all, it helps. <laughs> He's like, well, it helps. Okay, this is very interesting. Jason now says they're looping up, they're warming up, and uh, here we go, they're warming up. Uh, he now says that he no longer has to worry about having empathy for someone else. Now, obviously, he's talking about his ex here. And again, this is no knock on Caitlin whatsoever. She's probably going to hear this and want to respond in her own way, which is that, yeah, you 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 break up from, from someone, you want to protect them, then eventually you're like, well, I want to worry about me, and you want to be selfish again, uh, and, and all of that. So... You know, that's that's the natural way that it goes. Now, what will be interesting is if Jason can worry about himself and not feel like he needs to share his side of the story. Because when you start sharing your side, receipts and all these things will come out from the other person. And whether you're on the right side or the wrong side, it'll just get ugly. Do the things I know I can do in work, but like also just developing myself every day in a way I, I can just be a better person to myself, if that makes sense. It does. Get to I'm, the goods. Get to I it. don't want this to be a bash on Caitlin because you and I both know Caitlin well. Chris knows Caitlin well. We're friends with Caitlin. Um, But but relationships that don't work out teach you something. Um, They do. Like with my relationship with Lauren, it taught. And I like it. He's like, without without bashing Caitlin, tell us why she caused this. No, I'm kidding. Me something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that I'm with Jess, she was the person I was looking for. What characteristics and next partner are you kind of looking for? Because I know there's a lot of women out there that are probably like, I would love to date a Jason Tardick. <laughs> like nice he is a that. really attractive dude who has his stuff together. But like, as you've kind of gone through different oh seasons of life, God. what characteristics are you looking for in your next partner? Um, Not from Canada. No, number one for sure is Has someone a, a dancing with the stars in which the support that's given is matched in return. Wants support that is given matched in return. So in his way of saying what he wants for his next partner, I think it's fair to say this is what he felt like he didn't get in his relationship. I think that's fair to make that assumption. You guys tell me. Um, number two, I would say is uh, honesty and, t- and integrity. Uh, I think when you get caught in love clouds, it's easy to avoid a lot of those things. 
I think number three is we live in a world in which uh, so much is working against relationships and so much is working against happiness. And I think the more happiness you have, the more envy there becomes. And when that envy enters, you need such a solid unit that your partner um, in the room with you and without you in the room is there for you and they have your back, right? So those are three huge things um, that I'll be looking for. It's almost like they both want to be the stars and don't want to take the back seat to each other's careers, which again, I can understand that could be very hard to sort of navigate those things here. Um, I've got, what, three more clips to pay f play for you. And trust me, it only gets better. Then I could and say like, what does that like love cloud look like? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think yeah, I think you you bring up a few good points. I think um, even when you look at just you talk about like I know you said you don't want to badmouth anyone, and I don't think anyone should be. I think even when you look at why relationships didn't work, that's why I even hate even stepping into these conversations. To Chris, I mentioned on your podcast, mm -hmm. it's always I, I always start to, to I could feel it. I, I am already deregulated talking about it. Why am I deregulated talking about it? Do you regularly talking about it because I have a very, very long laundry list of why things didn't work out Whoa. in this relationship, right? And Spill it. my ex also has a very long list and there's no way those lists connect. Mm. And my perspective is going to be a lot of hearsay and opinions and her perspective is going to be a lot of hearsay and opinions. And when you enter into conversations like this with friends and mutual friends in a, in a world that's so small, I want to treat it with the same respect I would expect my significant other. And while I don't think that's been the case at this point, I'm Whoa. still going to stand here and not really dive into those things. Wow. Right? Jason is saying, I'm taking the high road. I don't think she has respected the breakup as much as I have. Again, these are these are may, maybe me reading between the lines, but you guys can nod your head yay or nay. Am I reading correctly? If they continue to exist and and prolong and and seem to be exacerbated, it's there's usually a reason why, and it's interesting. It's like you know, and and usually it's because someone wants it to, right? It's yeah. so someone is propelling it to make that happen, and it, I've just noticed like the headlines continue. Yeah, and, and what I, headlines continue though? Well, I just saw one today. <laughs> yeah, I, do. but I, I personally don't think Caitlin has bashed Jason at all. I think it must be tough for Caitlin when she thinks the audience is taking his side. That's all, right? I mean, you guys, I mean, I, I've reported on this story left and right. I, of course, I'm friends with Caitlin. I don't, I think, I think she cares a lot to think that the audience thinks she's the bad person when it just didn't work out. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I kind of reject the idea that she's prolonging this in any which way. Let's go to the 29 minute mark. Again, you can go check this episode out on the Ben and Ashley. I almost famous podcast. It's also available on Chris Harrison's podcast, but here's the final sort of dagger that I heard that I was like, Whoa, longs. If people are interested. Yeah. I mean, my take on it prolonging is just like, I, I don't, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to step into stuff. Um, unless I have to protest for myself, right? Yeah. And I don't, and there's, you know, there's been a lot of <laughs> interesting things, right? But I'm not going to step into anything unless I re unless it's truly directed. And there's been a lot of like, it seems like passive aggressive, little digs here and there, interpretations. But yeah, I mean, it just, it, it is what it is. And um yeah, it's an it's an interesting like dichotomy of analyzing all that, right? I mean, we the, the funny but, thing is the three of us sitting here yeah. have all been in the same spot to a certain degree. Yeah, like, we've all been a part of the headlines. We've all been on the good end of them. Yeah, and the, the really shitty end of them. Yeah, and you know they they they're both to the extremes. And when you're on the bad end, and when things keep going, it's like okay, you think it's over, and then there's another. Yeah, and there's another one. Yeah, and uh, it's it's tough. I mean, I know you know Ben with Lauren when he was going through it. I dealt with him and with you, and then you guys both dealt with it with my. Yeah, um, it's a lot.
It's a lot. I think in in defense to both sides or any sides or your side or anyone's side, Ben, your bring up side, whatever. Headlines, right? The idea, like just the business of it. You create a headline so people click. Yeah. The only thing these magazines are looking at is how many people click through. If people click, keep clicking through, they will continue to create those headlines. And those headlines are always going to be taken out of context to get you to click through. What I would say to anybody that is reading a headline is like, actually read the full article, then make your interpretation. Don't read, just go four but paragraphs down. Just go four paragraphs. Yeah, yes. <laughs> read, but, the, read the um, end. Yeah, just read the but, end. Well, by the way, it's good advice by him to go, you know, read the article and not the clickbait. And yet, I think I think he might have misinterpreted a lot of Caitlin's issues um, with with uh, with uh, by thinking that she's actually talking trash about him where i think i think some i think some of caitlin's issues at least have been with an audience that wants to see her as the bad guy because you have to remember when they break up everyone goes oh she's had a failed engagement before she's this she's that she's too loud she's too you know people people in the bachelor world have been really mean to her and Jason's been kind of scot-free and it can take two to tango and we don't really know what the truth is there. Uh, but I, I think Jason does a good job for the most part of taking the high road. But at the same time, like, let's be fair. He says there's been passive aggressive and digs here and there. He says there's other. So, you know, I mean, he's, he's getting his shots in as well. Like, I, do, yeah, I mean, I here's a headline here. This is the one I was talking about. So it was published today. Says Jason Tardick would have told himself to wake the hell up <laughs> before moving in with ex Caitlin Bristow. So, yeah, so I, I haven't even done this yet, but I've, if I scroll down to the bottom, which is a freaking long article, man. Oh, I could, I could. It I could, says um, I can interrupt you and we'll yeah. finish it. Finish it. Now, of course, this article we covered was about the idea that him and Caitlin have never talked finances before moving in together, and that had no, that was no knock on Caitlin. So yes, it. Uh, the fact alone that Jason's doing a book tour is going to lead to plenty of these titles. And this podcast they're doing right now isn't going to help. I could, I could tell uh, the, the final uh, paragraph says, now this changed throughout the years of our relationship. But the point, um, but to point at you a picture of how uninformed we were, here is a detailed list of all the numbers we didn't know before moving in together. All right, so then it goes on and on, and it's really not that it's really non-controversial. But look, this is the game you got to play. Jason tells all laundry list of reasons things didn't work out. I'm gonna have a title that says a lot of passive aggressive and little digs here and there. These are words that he said. I need people to click. Am I part of the problem? Probably, probably. Uh, but I also think audiences are part of the problem because they're lazy and they and they don't read the full article. So if you watch the full conversation you'd realize it's not that bad. I hope Jason and Caitlin listen to full conversations and don't go off of what so-and-so said about so-and-so. What a, you know, what a dumpster fire it can lead breakups to be. All right, we'll be back with more content right after this.